Regulation is coming to crypto following the collapse of FTX and scam bankman fraud. I mean, SBF was the golden boy, the poster child of this industry, yet he lied to customers, Wall Street, and most importantly, regulators. If there's ever a place I could be that I'm not going to get in trouble, it's going to be at FTX. And if he can't be trusted, no one can. But I guess everything's okay because SBF apologized. He stated, I'm sorry, that's the biggest thing. I and should have done better. But you know what? The regulators don't care. And the SEC has launched an investigation into Sam Bankman Freed. And he's likely facing potential jail time. And the regulators were already here, but now they are doubling down. And this is what they had to say just yesterday in Washington. Without proper oversight, uh, cryptocurrencies, they uh, it risks harming everyday Americans. But the most re recent <clears throat> new f news further underscores uh, these concerns and highlights why uh, prudent regulation of cryptocurrencies is indeed needed. When it comes to FTX, there are two separate entities. There's FTX International and FTX US. FTX International is what is insolvent at the moment. And right now, as I make this video, FTX US is still active and processing withdrawals. FTX US is a more regulated version of FTX. But even though FTX US is working right now as I make this video, get your funds off of FTX US as soon as you can. They also put out a notice stating, trading may be halted on FTX US in a few days. Please close down any positions you want to close down. Guys, get your funds off of FTX US if you still have them there. And at this point, we're not fighting against regulation happening because it's happening no matter what. The real fight is whether centralized platforms will be regulated only or will regulation spill into DeFi. If regulations spill into DeFi, it can get very complicated because it's so difficult to regulate DeFi and also it will stifle innovation. Meanwhile, this is what Sam Bankman-Fried was working on with regulators behind the crypto industry's back. He was working with Washington, trying to enforce regulations on DeFi. He is a true snake. And there's something I want to say about Sam Bankman-Fried, and this is not meant to be a joke. This is serious. Often, when we think of swindlers or scammers, we imagine them to have a certain look, maybe sleazy or rough looking. But when we look at someone who's wimpy and nerdy, we imagine that they wouldn't hurt a fly, but that's far from the truth in this space. This is, of course, Sam Bankman-Fried, and this is Caroline Ellison, the CEO of Alameda Research. At first glance, we'd imagine these people wouldn't hurt a fly, but it's far from the truth. And in this space, snakes come in all shapes and sizes. And with proper regulations, guys like Sam Bankman-Fried will be held accountable. What Sam Bankman-Fried did is outright theft. He took billions of dollars in users' funds and gambled it away. And it's very different than what happened with Voyager and Celsius. With Voyager and Celsius, customers actually signed permission for these companies to take their crypto, lend it out, and earn interest. That was not the case for FTX. Users did not give permission to FTX to lend out or use their funds. And right before FTX blew up, Sam Bankman-Fried put out a tweet stating, FTX has enough to cover all client holdings. We don't invest client assets. He then went ahead to delete that tweet after. This is an outright lie. And this is evidence that will be used against Sam Bankman-Fried in court. But I think at this point, everyone agrees that centralized platforms should be regulated. The fear is that it spills over into DeFi. Even if you ask a Bitcoin maximalist, do you think a bank should be regulated? Well, of course, they're going to say yes. These crypto exchanges are no different. They are banks that deal with crypto. They should be regulated. And I want to make something clear. I'm not against exchanges. I'm actually a big fan of exchanges. We need them to survive. So the optimal outcome is that we have regulation on centralized platforms and not on DeFi. But wherever we end up, whether we have this harsh regulation across the board or mild regulations, I see two really good things coming out of this. It's not all darkness. And the first one we're already seeing right now, and that is proof of reserves. This is exchanges showing that they actually have reserves backing up customer funds. And I want to give a shout out to Kraken. They've actually been doing this for a while. 
but it likely will become more common in the industry. And the CEO of Nansen, a blockchain analytics firm, put out a tweet stating, several exchanges are contacting us in the last 24 hours to display proof of reserves. We're happy to help for free. And here is an example they did for Binance. So here is an example of Binance's proof of reserves using Nansen. And it's pretty cool. It shows a breakdown of all of their different assets and the balance. So this is something good we're already seeing. Hopefully more exchanges follow suit. And what's great about this is that we can regulate ourselves even without the help of a regulator. And we can vote where to put our money based on these proof of reserves. My fear though, is that after all of this settles over, people will forget and start placing their money in any random exchange. Hopefully we don't get to that point. And the second big thing I see coming out of regulation, whether it's very strict or mild, is a spot Bitcoin ETF. And this is massive. Most people don't understand how big this is. When we talk about big money entering the crypto space, it has not happened yet. If you want to trade 500,000, 5 million, or even $10 million worth of crypto, you can do that at home. But if you want to trade hundreds of millions and combine billions and trillions in crypto, it is very difficult. A spot Bitcoin ETF will solve this. It will make the asset more liquid. This is one of the biggest problems of big money, such as financial firms, public companies, and family offices getting involved in crypto. Not only that, there are a ton of regulations surrounding it. A spot Bitcoin ETF would solve that. And also, when buying such large amounts of crypto, they have to then start focusing on securing it. It is so difficult when dealing with billions and trillions of dollars. So with the right regulation, we will likely get a spot Bitcoin ETF. The first ETF application was filed nine years ago and we still don't have one today. And when we get one, it's going to be really big. But with more of a focus on large cap coins, such as Bitcoin and Ethereum, the problem with harsh regulation, especially if it spills over into DeFi, is that it probably won't be a good thing for all coins and also will stifle innovation. And right now, with all of this commotion going on in the crypto space, there's no one you can trust except yourself. So if you have funds on an exchange and you are unsure, Get it off the exchange into a self-custody wallet. Hardware wallets are the best, but if you don't have a hardware wallet, there are many good options. For example, Trust Wallet supports multiple blockchains. Or if you just have assets on Ethereum and Solana, Coinbase Wallet is another great option. When it comes to hardware wallets, my favorite one is Ledger. And if you need help choosing the correct Ledger, go ahead and watch this video right here.